Number 9. MS World Discoverer The MS World Discoverer was a German-built cruise ship made in 1974. It started its life by carting people around on their vacations. It was built to withstand the frigid Arctic and was capable of navigating much of the icy northwestern passage. The ship even occasionally went on Antarctic cruises. Yet the durable vessel unexpectedly met its end when it struck an uncharted reef near the Solomon Islands in the year 2000. A ferry responded to the captain's distress signal and safely evacuated all the passengers. The ship began to list, so the captain grounded it in Roderick Bay to prevent it from sinking. Insurance inspectors classified the wreck as a loss. Ever since, the world discoverer has sat, neglected, and slowly sinking still in Roderick Bay. It's practically laying on its side, currently listing at 46 degrees. It's more or less inevitable that the vessel will eventually be completely lost below the surface of the water. Time, neglect, and the elements have not been kind to the ship. Over the years, several companies have tried to salvage the World Discoverer, but they found that on top of being damaged by Mother Nature, it was ransacked by locals during a violent civil war on the islands. Simply put, there was no saving the doomed ship. The wreck has become a tourist destination, but who knows how long it'll be there. So if you have a nagging itch to see it, you'd better do so before it's too late. Number 8. Chicken Church Back in the 1990s, a man named Daniel Alamja felt inspired by God to build a prayer house that he had a dream about. Even though he's a devout Christian, Alamja envisioned a site that welcomed all religions. More specifically, he wanted the building to be in the shape of a dove and to sit atop a hillside near his home in central Java, Indonesia. The ambitious man bought an acre of land and got to work. Alamja's creation ended up looking more like a hen than a dove, earning it the nickname Gareja Ayam, or Chicken Church but he went ahead and opened it to the public anyway. Various religions held services on the upper floors, while the lower levels were used for rehabilitating drug addicts and caring for disabled children. The site even functioned as an asylum for the mentally ill. But philanthropy doesn't pay the bills, and Alamja eventually went broke. To make matters worse, locals weren't as excited about his humanitarian vision as he was, and they didn't hesitate to let him know. Feeling he had no other choice, Alamja left the bizarre building behind in 2000. Since then, time and the elements have taken their toll on the chicken church, and it's currently in a state of decay. But that hasn't stopped stories and pictures from circulating on the internet, drawing curious visitors to the site from near and far. People have even gotten married and had their wedding photos taken there. The chicken church became so popular that some people have helped to make it look a tad less decrepit by covering the walls with vibrant murals and even opening a cafe inside. Only Mr. Alamja himself knows exactly what was going on in his mind when he decided to build this strange structure. But its late blooming popularity means that at least one of his desires was fulfilled, to see people enjoying the chicken church. Number 7. Boss 400 Shipwreck In 1994, a French crane barge named the Boss 400 ran aground during a storm in Maori Bay off the South African coast. At the time, it was the largest floating crane in Africa, and it was capable of lifting 1,200 tons, but the Boss 400 lacked engines of its own and had to be towed from place to place by a tugboat. The barge was being pulled by an underpowered Russian tug called the Tiger when it hit the rocks. It was en route to Cape Town from the Republic of Congo and had almost reached its destination when the tow rope broke. The crew radioed for help, and two more tugboats radioed to the scene. But the seas were rough, and they failed to connect any lines to the barge. Left with no other choice than to abandon the ship, the crew members were airlifted to safety. Several salvage attempts were made, but in the end, the Boss 400 was declared a total loss. Its owners had no choice but to leave the $70 million barge nestled among the boulders where it remains today. For now, the crane and part of the vessel are visible above sea level, but the wreck is disintegrating and will eventually disappear beneath the waves. Number 6. Walney UFO Village about an hour's drive outside the Taiwanese capital of Taipei, there's a mysterious abandoned holiday resort that looks like something from another world. Known as the Wan Li UFO Village or the Sanji Village, the failed housing development was designed by Finnish architect Matti Surinen during the 1970s and 80s. The plans consisted of two types of houses, Futuro dwellings, which resembled flying saucers, and Venturo homes, which were slightly more normal looking but still had an extraterrestrial feel. Surinan designed these abodes to be part of a futuristic upscale and high-tech beachside resort. But for reasons that remain unclear to this day, the project was abandoned during the 1980s. Some people actually live in these prefabricated otherworldly homes, but most are empty, and some parts of the village have been demolished according to remote lands. Although the development never fully came to fruition, it's successful in its own right as a dilapidated tourist destination. What's left of the settlement consists of strangely shaped decaying houses and roads with grass growing through the pavement. 
The homes have rusting metal fixtures, faded paintings on the walls, and other telltale signs of decomposition and desertion. Roofs are caved in, windows are shattered, and the walls are crumbling. For years, rumors circulated about developers planning to fully demolish the site and build something more promising, but it hasn't happened yet. It appears as though Taiwan's tourism industry benefits from the decrepit neighborhood that was never lived in, but seems to attract visitors to the island. Would you ever stay in a place like this? Let us know in the comments down below, and if you're liking this video, be sure to hit thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Number 5. Chantillon Car Graveyard There was a spooky car graveyard full of rusting automobiles in southern Belgium. Nestled within a small forest near the village of Châtillon, the vehicles supposedly belonged to U.S. soldiers who were stationed in the area during World War I, according to one story at least. When the war ended and it was time to return home, it would have been extremely expensive for American troops to ship the cars they had bought overseas back to the States. To spare themselves the cost, the soldiers allegedly drove the vehicles into the woods, parked them neatly in rows, and simply left them behind. If this story is true, it means that nobody ever missed their car enough to go back and get it. Locals are quick to point out that many of the vehicles at the site were made after World War II, suggesting that perhaps it's just an ordinary junkyard in a weird place. The cars were removed from the forest in 2010, though, so we'll probably never know the full story behind the strange site, which lives on only in photographs. Number 4. Lake Reschen Bell Tower Lake Reschen is a man-made lake in South Tyrol, Italy, near the Austrian and Swiss borders. It's famous for a 14th century steeple that sticks out of the water. The lake wasn't always there, though. Back in 1920, there were plans to create a smaller, shallower body of water as a reservoir for a hydroelectric plant. Then, in 1939, the chemical company Montecatini proposed to create a larger lake than originally planned by bringing two natural bodies of water together. This would require builders to submerge several villages. The project was delayed several times due to World War II and resistance from locals, who didn't want their homes and land to be put underwater. Finally, in 1950, water began to flow into the Vinchgau Valley, drowning 163 homes and 1,290 acres of cultivated land. Before the lake was made, workers demolished the nave of the Church of St. Katerina and removed the bells from its steeple. Founded in 1357, the historic House of Worship once stood as a testament to the area's long and rich history. Most of it is no longer there. But for whatever reason, the bell tower was left in place, and now it's become somewhat of a tourist attraction. Authorities have even drained the lake on a few occasions to perform maintenance on it, ensuring that the steeple continues to stand, even though the rest of the town wasn't considered important enough to save. Even though there are no longer any bells in the tower, local legend claims that you can sometimes hear them ringing during the winter. Number 3. Lapalisse Castle Lapalisse Castle isn't really a castle, but that's what it's called, and it's kind of what it looks like, too. Confused? So are we. Located in northern Poland, the structure is actually a derelict mansion that was abandoned before it was finished being built. Construction began in 1979 on what was supposed to be a grand estate and studio for an artist named Peter Kazimierziak. His dream home was supposed to include a swimming pool, a ballroom, ramparts, and 12 towers representing the 12 apostles, according to Atlas Obscura. But Kazimierziak ran out of money while it was being built, and the mansion was partially on land that he didn't exactly have a permit to build on. The artist had no choice but to abandon the partially finished home. No banks were willing to purchase the site due to its extremely high cost and incomplete state. In 2006, Kazimierziak was ordered to demolish the strange eyesore. He couldn't afford to do so, and the local council said they would have it knocked down at some point in the near future. However, 15 years later, Lapalisse Castle still stands. Some sources have said that Kazimierzak hasn't given up on his vision and that he's even trying to get permission to resume the construction. But for now, the medieval-looking mansion is an empty shell with graffiti all over its walls. Word has it that it's falling into a state of decay and losing its structural integrity, which of course attracts urban explorers who enter the property at their own risk. What the future holds for Lapalisse Castle is anyone's guess. Number 2. Bartini Beriev VVA-14 Plane during the Cold War, the United States and the Soviet Union competed to outsupply the other with military equipment. This frenzied contest was quite possibly the biggest and most expensive arms race in history. During this tense time, the Soviet Union made it a priority to prepare for missile strikes from deep in the ocean. To combat these threats, the Soviet Navy developed a strange-looking aircraft called the Bartini Beri VVA-14 plane. This amphibious vehicle operated on both the water and in the air. Its primary task was to detect American submarines and prevent nuclear missile strikes. The strange-looking aircraft was named after its Italian-born designer, Robert Bartini. It was perched on pontoons and was piloted by a three-man crew. The plane was capable of vertical takeoff, taking off and landing in the water or on land, and skimming along the water while patrolling for enemy submarines. 
Two prototypes were built, but the project was ultimately scrapped. Only one prototype survives today. It sits near the Russian Air Force Museum outside Moscow and is more of an eyesore than a museum exhibit. The lonely, dilapidated aircraft is missing its wings and serves as a reminder of the immense time and money that was spent on failed innovations during the Cold War. In 2013, a group of aviation enthusiasts campaigned to revive the Bartini Bereave VVA-14 plane, but their efforts were unsuccessful. Number 1. Teufelsberg Spy Station On the edge of Berlin in the Grunewald Forest, there's a 262-foot, 80-meter hill known as Teufelsberg, or Devil's Hill. It was created with debris from thousands of buildings that were destroyed during World War II. Up to 800 truckloads of rubbish were dumped at the site every day for years. During the 1950s, the U.S. National Security Agency, NSA, built a station on the hill for spying on communist East Germany. It consisted of large round buildings called radomes, as well as huge satellite dishes that were used for intercepting and jamming correspondences among members of the Eastern Bloc. American intelligence officials used the facility until the Berlin Wall fell in 1989, signaling the end of the Cold War. After that, the site functioned as an air traffic control center for 10 years. The government sold the property in 1999, but it was never redeveloped. Five large decommissioned radar domes remain standing on Devil's Hill today, serving as an eerie reminder of Cold War era tensions and paranoia between nations. Visitors can tour certain parts of the graffiti-covered decrepit facility, but if you're not sold on the idea of visiting an abandoned intelligence base, Teufelsberg is worth a trip for the stunning views it offers of the Berlin skyline. Documents from Teufelsberg are slated to become declassified next year and will provide the first ever glimpse into the site's daily activities. Number 10. German Submarine If you found a Russian tank in the middle of a cornfield in Kansas, you'd be pretty shocked, right? That's basically what happened here, when an abandoned German submarine from World War II was discovered by amateur divers in a pretty unlikely place. It was found at the bottom of Lake St. Jean in Quebec, Canada. This is a far cry from where most of the fighting was done during World War II. There were no real battles fought on Canadian land during the war, Yet this German submarine managed to creep from the ocean, through rivers, and eventually into the lake, where it took out three fishing boats before a Canadian destroyer sunk the pesky submarine. For those who don't know, Canada actually entered World War II way before the Americans did. They were considered a major enemy in the eyes of the Germans. To strike at the heart of Canada, the Nazis hatched a plan to send sneaky submarines through rivers to attack industrial targets in Quebec. It didn't really turn out that well since the Canadian destroyers were ready and took out the submarines as soon as they responded. However, this is the only abandoned German sub that's ever been found from the war in Canada. Number 9. Soviet Aircraft Carrier Yes, somehow machines of war keep ending up in places you'd never expect. The people who uncover them must be absolutely baffled. Currently, there's a Soviet aircraft carrier rotting in a Chinese lagoon. The vessel is a Kiev-class aircraft carrier called the Minsk, which is abandoned 50 miles 80 kilometers from the city of Shanghai. How it got there was quite a journey. The aircraft carrier began its life in Ukraine in 1972. It was classified as a heavy aviation cruiser with a displacement of 40,000 tons. It could launch anti-ship cruise missiles, it had twin 76mm guns, and it was big enough for jets and helicopters to land on. It wasn't something you'd want to mess with, but something happened it couldn't prevent. It was 1991 when the Soviet Union collapsed and the newly formed Russian Navy took possession of the ship. However, it was suffering from engineering problems and had recently experienced a fire in the engine room. The Russians didn't feel like spending the money to fix the ship, so they sold it as scrap. By 1995, the Minsk had made its way to South Korea to be broken apart. That never ended up happening, though. The Minsk was purchased by a Chinese entrepreneur who wanted to build a theme park around it. The entrepreneur had the aircraft carrier brought to a lagoon north of Shanghai, but the theme park never really got off the ground. It did open, but just six years later, the whole operation went bankrupt. Ever since, the Minsk has been rotting in that same lagoon. And yes, it's still there today. You can go see it, if you dare. Number 8. Google Street View Car Some of the most remote parts of the world are home to strange sites and abandoned property, and northern India is no exception. An Opel Astra hatchback was discovered crashed off the side of the road in a rocky ravine in what appears to be a northern part of India. The car was discovered with the Google Street View equipment attached to its roof. Nobody knows exactly what happened to this thing, but it was definitely working for Google. It must have been mapping the local streets when it made a wrong turn and went over a cliff. It even has the Google insignia plastered on the passenger door. We don't know if anyone was injured when the car crashed or why it was left abandoned after the fact. Judging by the dirt that's accumulated on the vehicle, it's been sitting at the bottom of the ravine for several years. 
Hopefully the replacement car was able to map out this remote path without crashing in the process. Number 7. Abandoned Spacecraft There is a huge half-built spaceship called the Baikal, named so after the biggest lake in Russia, abandoned in Moscow. The abandonment of the craft, like so much of the old technology in the Soviet Union, came in 1991 during the collapse. It was part of the Buran space program, with only a few sister crafts being made as well. However, only one of these orbiters ever managed to reach space. When the Soviet Union fell apart, so too did the space program. The Baikal, along with a few other crafts, were scrapped before they could be finished. Most of them were simply abandoned on the factory floor and eventually turned into scrap metal. The Baikal was dumped outside of the factory in Moscow where it was built. It then sat there in the dust for over 10 years. It was eventually dismantled and moved to a parking lot alongside a canal in Moscow, where somebody put it back together and abandoned it yet again. To this day, the half-finished spaceship is still sitting beside the canal. But if you ever wanted to work on renovating a rocket ship in your spare time, you could probably buy the half-built empty Hulk for a super discounted price. Number 6. Incredible Barn Find a group of teenagers made a shocking discovery when they broke into a barn in Brazil and found it packed to the ceiling with classic automobiles dating back to the 1920s. It's pretty rare to find classic cars in barns, never mind an entire sanctuary of classic vehicles. These kids found motorcycles, gas pumps, and American muscle cars from the 1970s. Even more shocking was that the vehicles had pretty much no miles on them, suggesting they'd been purchased or moved into the barn immediately after leaving the country. But just where in the world did all these cars come from? According to the local Brazilian media, the barn was once a private museum. It was never open to the public, with the owner only showing off his cars to his friend. After the owner of the cars died, his heirs had no idea what to do with all the classic cars, and so they abandoned them in the barn. These guys must have been pretty wealthy to leave such valuable vehicles as a 1952 Style Line, a 1969 Fiat 124 Sport Coupe, and even an original Ford Model T. I wonder who got to sell off the stash of vintage cars and profit from the discovery. Who do you think should? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section down below, and if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Number 5. Death in a Ford Truck Back in 2019, an abandoned Ford truck in Queens made news headlines when a decomposing corpse was discovered sitting casually in the passenger seat. This is by far one of the most gruesome abandoned vehicle discoveries ever. The police actually had to pry open the doors with crowbars to reach the festering body inside. The bus itself, painted in gaudy colors of blue and green, was once a food truck serving national dishes from El Salvador. It had gotten parked on Liberty Avenue and then it was just kind of forgotten about. Nobody paid the ugly thing any attention until a noxious odor began leaking out of it and someone got curious enough to look in through the window. That was when the body was discovered. According to the New York Daily News, the dead guy had been a local vagrant who collected metal, sold it for scrap, and lived in the abandoned truck. By the time the cops got his body out, he'd been dead for a significant amount of time. He was basically already a mummy. Number 4. Abandoned Race Circuit More than an abandoned vehicle, this is an entire abandoned race track. You could, if you really wanted, drive your performance car out here and race to your heart's content. At least as long as the police don't find out. The circuit Rémgo in France is one of the most fascinating abandoned racetracks in the world. It was built back in 1920 and became a favorite racing circuit for the Grand Prix. The famous race car driver Francois Lescaut won the championship in 1926, driving his Bugatti T35B 2LC. The last Formula One race here was held in 1966. Motorcycle racing continued on the track until 1972, when the place had to shut down because of financial difficulties. A portion of the track was demolished in 2002, but some of it still remains to this day. You won't find any abandoned race cars here, but the pit stops are still around, as are the bleachers, parts of the racetrack, and a few old advertisements from local auto shops. Number 3. The Antarctic Snow Cruiser Thomas Poulter designed the Antarctic Snow Cruiser between 1937 and 1939. It was meant to be a powerful all-terrain vehicle that would help United States scientists explore Antarctica during an expedition that began in 1940. Almost immediately upon the snow cruiser's arrival in Antarctica, the crew began to experience problems. They couldn't unload the thing from the ship and had to fashion a makeshift ramp. Then once they got the vehicle into the snow, it wouldn't move. The tires were designed to roll freely through the snow and ice, yet it wouldn't move at all. In fact, the vehicle sunk three feet, one meter into the snow. They ended up having to drive it in reverse and they only got 92 miles, 150 kilometers. They were forced to abandon the snow cruiser when it became clear it would be of absolutely no help to anyone. 
The bizarre vehicle was rediscovered in 1946 by yet another expedition to Antarctica. They realized that the vehicle simply needed more air in its tires to make it operational. However, they were unable to do anything about it, and so they left it sitting there in the snow. By the time an international expedition came across the snow cruiser again in 1958, it was covered by 23 feet of snow. They only knew it was there because of a bamboo pole marking its position. They didn't have the ability to melt it out of its hole, so they left it there. Since then, there's been no trace of the mysterious snow cruiser. It's probably entombed somewhere deep under the ice, waiting for future explorers to uncover it in a hundred years. Number two, tanks at Flamenco Beach. A serene, beautiful beach littered with the husks of old war machines? It's true, but why? Even today, Flamenco Beach in Puerto Rico is still covered in abandoned war tanks. It's one of the most serene and gorgeous landscapes anywhere in the Caribbean, with a beautiful shoreline marred by the rusting tanks left behind by the U.S. Navy. The history behind the tanks and how they got there goes back to 1901 when Spain handed Puerto Rico over to the United States. The president of the time, Theodore Roosevelt, gave the land of Flamenco Beach to the U.S. Navy, who used the beach for testing. Then in 1936, they used it for bombing practice. There was never an official base here, but they did move a ton of equipment into the area, including decommissioned tanks from World War II. They continued missile testing until 1969, bombing the paint right off the tanks. By the 1970s, the locals were getting angry about the unfettered military testing. The Navy was forced to clear out of there, but in their haste, they left behind a ton of stuff, including the tanks that still sit on the beach to this day. Someone should really clear them off the beach and turn it back into a tropical paradise, don't you think? Number 1. Abandoned Ghost Ship There's an abandoned ship that recently appeared after being missing for over nine years. The story of the ship goes back to 2009 when it vanished mysteriously in the Pacific Ocean. The last time the ship was seen, it had a full crew and was sailing away from the Taiwanese coast. The ship, called the Sam Rutalangi PB-1600, lost contact with the outside world, and nobody had any clue what happened to it. Almost 10 years later, it reappeared suddenly in the ocean south of Myanmar. A group of local fishermen were the first to find the vessel. Out of curiosity, they entered the ship and found nobody on board. The ship was totally empty, without crew or cargo. Nobody knows what happened to this thing in the years that it was seemingly nowhere on Earth. The best guess scientists can come up with is that the crew abandoned the vessel and ran away. However, their bodies have never been found, and they've never resurfaced in any country. It's as if they literally vanished into thin air, leaving the ship to wander the ocean as a ghost until it finally marooned itself on the shore. Number 11. Glow in the Dark Mushrooms the world is home to nearly 100 known bioluminescent mushroom species. The newest one, known as Roridomyces philostochides, was discovered late last year in northeastern India as part of a scientific project to document mushroom species. The fungus was spotted along a stream during monsoon season in August 2020, according to the India Times. Locals already knew about the fungus, which they call electric mushrooms. A local led researchers to it in the middle of the night and instructed them to put their torches out. Several of the light-emitting mushrooms instantly began to glow. Only the mushroom stalks are bioluminescent, which made the team realize that it might be a new species. They took the samples back to their lab and, sure enough, their suspicions proved correct. It's also the first species of its genus ever found in India, and one of just a handful of growing fungi ever found in the country. But there are probably more out there just waiting to be discovered. Number 10. Hidden Cemetery You may be surprised to learn that there are historic cemeteries in many places throughout the world that have been forgotten over time. One was recently discovered in West Greenwich, Rhode Island by a man named Brian Page, who had just purchased the land that the graveyard is located on. He stumbled upon the cemetery after following an ungated path into the forest. Speaking with news station WPRI, Page said that his family had no idea that the burial ground was on his property, and he described feeling pretty shocked about it. At just 1,545 square miles, 4,002 kilometers squared, Rhode Island is the smallest state in the U.S., yet it has over 3,200 historical cemeteries, including the one that Page discovered. In the records, it's simply labeled as Historic Cemetery 96. It was lost for about a century as evidenced by the toppling headstones and overgrowth of vegetation that Page observed. Understanding the site's historical importance, he summoned his friends and family to help restore it. They spent hours tidying the graveyard up, and Page continues to maintain it to this day. But the most exciting discovery came after the landowner noticed that three headstones in the cemetery belonged to people with the last name Gates. Through Ancestry.com, Page traced all three to billionaire Bill Gates' family. 
Number 9. Bizarre Wartime Climate Anomaly over 8.5 million soldiers died during World War I, but warfare alone was not the only cause of death. According to a study published last year, a unique weather system that scientists describe as a 1 in 100 year climate anomaly lingered throughout Europe from 1914 to 1919, and it dramatically increased the war's casualties. The atypical weather system was coincidentally most active right before or during some of the war's biggest battles. It caused torrential rain and uncharacteristically cold temperatures. Battlefields at Verdun, the Somme, Ypres, and elsewhere became waterlogged, causing some of the war's most major losses of life. Many soldiers died from disease or drowned in mud holes. Others stood in water for days and developed trench foot or frostbite. The most dangerous conditions that the thick mud created also slowed soldiers and their horses down and made it difficult to move equipment. Research claims that the climate anomaly worsened the war by making the environment even more dangerous. Scientists also blame the weather system for worsening the 1918 influenza pandemic, commonly and inaccurately called the Spanish flu. In fact, experts think the weather system might have even started the pandemic by altering the migration behavior of ducks, which are known to carry the virus. Normally, the ducks migrate to Russia every year. Instead, they stayed in one place, putting them and their feces in close proximity to human populations and possibly contaminating local water supplies. Number 8. Buren Test Shuttles if you had the chance to check out an abandoned space shuttle, would you do it? You know, a project originally designed to send human beings to another planet. It sounds like the adventure of a lifetime. But the Buren program was a Soviet space shuttle project that ran from 1974 to 1993. It was launched in response to the development of the U.S. space shuttle with its goal to design a reusable spacecraft. The Buren Orbiter 1K1 shuttle only completed one uncrewed orbit before the program was suspended indefinitely due to the high costs it came with. President Boris Yeltsin officially canceled the project in 1993, a few years after the Soviet Union collapsed. The shuttle was called the Orbiter 1K1 and was destroyed in a different hangar of the same complex which in 2002 collapsed, tragically killing eight workers. Two of the prototypes are kept in an abandoned hangar in Kazakhstan called the Baikonur Cosmodrome, which is still an active site today. But the test spacecrafts are still there, frozen in time and mostly forgotten, besides a few urban explorers that know about the site. A film director named Alexander Kunas walked 24 miles kilometers, through the desert to reach the hangar and spent three nights sleeping in the area, according to Cater's news agency. But the site is secure, so he had to sneak in in the middle of the night and understood that he was risking getting into some trouble. It turned out to be worth it because he managed to snap some fascinating photos of the prototypes. Number 7. Egypt's Lost Golden City Earlier this year, Egypt's Ministry of Antiquities announced the discovery of ruins from the so-called Lost Golden City of Luxor. Dating back over 3,000 years, the ancient city was found buried in the sand by a team of archaeologists who were looking for King Tut's mortuary temple. According to excavation leader Zahi Hawass, it's the largest ancient Egyptian city ever discovered. Other researchers had tried and failed to find the city many times before. The team first realized they had found something important when they encountered zigzagging mud walls measuring as high as 10 feet 3 meters. Archaeologist Betsy Bryan described the site as the most important discovery in Egypt since King Tut's tomb was found in 1922. The Golden City will help experts better understand life during Egypt's Golden Age, according to Hawass, who spoke with NBC. So far, the team has unearthed rings, scarabs, pottery, tools, and other artifacts which date back between 1391 and 1353 BC during the reign of Amenhotep III. The site contains storage houses, grinding stones, and areas for meat production, offering an unprecedented glimpse into everyday life in an ancient Egyptian industrial city. The archaeologists also found a skeleton with outstretched arms and a rope around the person's knees. They have yet to come up with an explanation for the odd burial and have several other lingering questions about the site, which they hope will be answered during future digs. Number 6. Water on the Moon Late last year, NASA confirmed that water has finally been discovered on the Moon. The agency's Stratospheric Observatory for Infrared Astronomy, nicknamed SOFIA, detected the H2O in the Moon's southern hemisphere in a sunlit area called the Clavius Crater. Altogether, the discovery amounted to the equivalent of a 12-ounce bottle of water. It defies previous findings that any water molecules on the Moon would be in cold, unlit regions. Researchers wrote that while the new information changes their understanding of the distribution of the Moon's water molecules, they still do not believe that water could be present anywhere on the Moon. After all, it wasn't a lot of water. To give you an idea, the Sahara Desert has roughly a hundred times more water than what was found on the Moon. And that's one of the driest places on Earth. 
but it's still a major discovery, leaving experts with new questions to find the answers to, including how the moon's water is created and how it withstands the harsh lunar environment. Scientists had long suspected that there's water on the moon, but they only detected it in the form of ice in the 20 years leading up to this recent discovery. The news came along with an announcement from NASA that it plans to put astronauts back on the moon in 2024 and to establish a consistent presence there by 2030. If you have the opportunity to go to space, would you take it? Let us know in the comments down below and if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Number 5. Prehistoric Turtle While inspecting the ruins of an old church in Christchurch, New Zealand, a sculptor named Paul Deans discovered a 35 million year old fossil of a turtle embedded in the core of a limestone pillar. The Oxford Terrace Baptist Church was built between 1881 and 1882. It suffered severe damage in a series of earthquakes in 2011 and was then demolished. The building's pillars were hollowed out and sent to Deans, who planned to use them for his work. This led him to the unexpected discovery. According to Dr. Paul Scofield, who is a senior curator of natural history at the Canterbury Museum, the unnamed ancient turtle species resembles another turtle fossil that a builder found while quarrying limestone in Oamaru in 1880. He concluded that both fossils were probably extracted from the same quarry and may even contain parts of the same animal. Speaking with Stuff.co.nz, Scofield explained, turtle fossils are really rare in New Zealand. He also said that no other turtle fossils have been found at the quarry in the last 150 years. Scientists are studying the newly discovered piece. They plan to examine microfossils surrounding the turtle to determine if the two fossils are from the same animal. Scofield speculated that the prehistoric species was a sea turtle similar in size to the modern-day leatherback turtle, which grows up to 7.2 feet 2.2 meters long. It lived between 65.5 million to 23 million years ago, when New Zealand was covered in shallow seawater. Number 4. Spy Boat In late 2020, a high-end solar-powered spy boat washed ashore on the remote Scottish island of Tiri. Beachgoers discovered the mysterious vehicle near a military base between some large rocks and contacted the Coast Guard. Only the U.S. Navy and the British Royal Navy used that particular model of boat, called a wave glider spy vessel. Yet nobody ever came forward to claim it. The boat is not equipped with lights, leading some to believe that it was used for illicit purposes. One theory suggests that the boat is a Russian-made replica of the wave glider and that it was perhaps in the area to spy on the British military. And it's true that the Russian military developed a vessel like this in 2016 known as the Fugu, but the claims about Russia being responsible for the unidentified boat remain unsubstantiated. It makes sense that a spy boat would be near Tiri, which is along a route that British nuclear submarines would take to reach the North Atlantic. But for now, nobody knows whose boat it is and why or how it ended up there. Number 3. Hidden Frescoes A few years ago, Tufts University professor Christina Maranci traveled to Armenia to investigate archaeological sites that are typically off-limits to researchers. She found herself hiding from local police inside the Marin Cathedral, where she suspected that something was written beneath the plaster on the walls. Maranci took some photos and used Photoshop to enhance their obscured features. She discovered traces of hidden frescoes and inscriptions that are invisible to the naked eye, including an ox in the church's apse. The adventurous historian believes the image is an early 11th century depiction of the biblical figure Ezekiel with an ox, a lion, a man, and an angel, the symbols of the four evangelists Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But Maranci admitted that she's just speculating and that more investigation is needed to confirm the fresco's age and meaning. Maranci was not particularly interested in frescoes when she made the discovery. But the finding inspired her to investigate other old churches for similar features. She credits Photoshop, a widely available program, for helping her to find the concealed frescoes, but also said that it's important for a researcher to know what they're looking for. Maranci continues to study her findings and hopes to overcome several obstacles surrounding the discovery, including legal policies that prevent researchers from exploring valuable sites in the region. Number 2. Medieval Tunnel while digging a hole for a new power line pole in Monmouthshire, Wales earlier this year, electrical workers discovered a mysterious network of tunnels running beneath a 12th century abbey. Situated along a stream, the tunnel system is just 4 feet 1.2 meters tall. There's no record of it being built, leaving archaeologists baffled about what the tunnels were used for or how big the network is. The system does not appear on any maps created by the UK's mapping agency, which date back to the 18th century. This explains why the power company had permission to dig at an archaeological site that they normally wouldn't have been allowed to dig at. The tunnels may be connected to the nearby Tintern Abbey. This so-called national icon of Wales was built in 1131. It fell into disrepair after King Henry VIII closed down monasteries during the 16th century, which could possibly be why the tunnels are absent from historical records. The network could also be associated with the ruins of old furnaces and ironworks in the area. 
Technician Alan Gore, who participated in the discovery, said that he's been involved in other excavations of old wells and cellars that are not documented, but that the tunnels are by far the most exciting and impressive find that he's been a part of. The electrical work was rerouted, and archaeologists plan to thoroughly excavate the system in hopes of learning more about its origins. Number 1. Ancient Fish A group of geologists discovered the remarkably well-preserved bones of an ancient fish while studying sediment cores that were collected from coastal lakes in Norway. The fossil belonged to a species called the three-spined stickleback fish. It lived in brackish waters around 12,000 years ago, a time when the lake it was found in was nearly but not entirely disconnected from the sea. After the ice sheets melted at the end of the last ice age, coastlines throughout the northern hemisphere experienced an uplift, creating inland lakes that effectively cut the three-spined stickleback off from the ocean. A recent study revealed that stickleback populations in separate places evolved to survive in their new freshwater environments. In a phenomenon known as parallel evolution, both experienced similar changes in behavior, function, and appearance. Scientists typically rely on modern-day species for learning about parallel evolution. The rare opportunity to study these types of changes in an ancient animal eliminated some of the guesswork that comes with identifying ancient and modern evolutionary traits. For the study, the team extracted DNA from two prehistoric stickleback fish and compared the results against modern specimens. They found that the ancient fish already had genetic variants that resulted from their adjustments to freshwater. These findings are helping experts to better learn the ways evolution occurs over thousands or even tens of thousands of years and are helping to fill in some of the gaps of evolutionary timelines. Thanks for watching. Which one of these discoveries would you be most excited about? Let us know in the comments below and if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time for another amazing video right here on American Eye.